Recently, I received a Bach 36 and a Bach 42 pictured here for scratch brush refinishing. I had to custom bend a brace to the uh, customer's requirements for the Bach 42. The brace is technically available from Con Selmer, but is not in stock, which means it's probably not going to be available for months and months. So anyway, I had to fill a brace to bend it and then install it. So we're going to make it. So this is a Bach brace tube, same diameter and enough length we can work with. So what I'll do is first anneal it. We want to soften the brass and um, then I'll show you the process. I've got water here. You do not need to quench brass. For it to be annealed you just need to bring it to you know a cherry red that's fully annealed I'm just quenching it because it'll quicken the process so we'll see if this does it noisy Again, that's just cooling it quickly so I can handle it and get, get on with my job. All right, so that's annealed, fully annealed. And the next step, we'll be filling this with a product called Cerroband. My um, pot of Cerroband, which is a melting, it's an alloy used for bending. It melts at like 156 degrees. First, I will take my brass tube that's been fully annealed. I'm putting a cork in there, all right? This is a wildly expensive solution to coat the inside of this tube to um, act as a release agent. And, um, you might say, well, what is that, Jim? What, what is that expensive, wildly expensive product that you're putting in there that, that's going to make this such a fantastic repair or uh, important... Uh, what's that, what is that important substance? Any guesses? Any guesses? Keep guessing. What could that possibly be? What is in this jar? Is it glycerin? No, it is simply, are you ready for this? Extra virgin olive oil. That's all it is. Okay, I wanna heat this up. It's a noisy torch head. But it's not that hot. It's only it's like only 150 degrees, so it's almost there. Look at that. It's like mercury. Just add a little more heat to melt that last little log in there. We don't want this stuff to boil. Come to think of it, I don't even know what the boiling temperature of uh, that would be. Probably be pretty hot, but anyway. You can find Bend on, uh, just on the web in terms of like melting alloys. So now I'm gonna try and do this so you all can see it. Um, where are we? There we are. All right, so we just take this 
stainless steel. There we go. When it cools. And then I'll put it in I'll put it in cool water just to hasten the process. Again, I don't want to quench this. There's no need to like uh quench it or anything. In fact, that may crystallize it or something to the point of not being as useful, but you know. Yeah, that's not even hot. You can see that that's that's like melty, right? You know, it's like a hundred and some degrees, but you know, it's not it's not bad. Like I say, the the temperature on this stuff is like 156 for melting. And that's already starting to solidify. See that? It's starting to solidify. It looks like slush on a on the road in Wisconsin, you know. It's starting to harden up. The way to bend a brass tube, thin wall brass tubing Typically, like for like a uh, tuning slide, that that thickness of brass with that diameter, you can use, um, you know, like allied cells, pipes, and tubes that are filled with pitch. And pitch is a real stinky, smoky product that you have to melt out. You have to definitely do it in a well ventilated room with a fan that sucks it out, or do it outside. That stuff is really kind of a mess. Um, you just need to melt it out, and then you can pour like lacquer thinner or acetone in, and that will uh, that will remove the rest of the the residue. But this is just so slick because now I'll heat it up again, and I'll just pour it right out into this little into this little bucket, which is already hardened. So I've already experimented with uh, trying to bend this tube in between a um, pair of rollers. And it's, this is like rock hard. This is like as hard as granite. <laughs> it feels like. So I'm going to try this method and see what happens. We got a uh, our filled tube, the cerro bend, and basically I have to make this a gentle S brace um, to fit in that trombone, as you've seen in the picture. So I'm going to try this and see what happens. Sometimes you have to uh, learn by experiment. So let's see if it works. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that's working. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, there's part of the bend. Now we go the opposite way. And again, this is just more for a cosmetic effect that he was hoping to have. You know, some trombones have a, kind of an S-shaped brace, so we can do that. There we go. That's just about like the Bach brace that uh, uh, used to be available for their convertible setups. Let me just work this a little bit more. So we've got our basic shape uh, built into this. There's some a little bit of distortion in the tube, but that'll all come out with uh, working it with some tools. Uh, just like you do, you would do anything. So maybe I'll use a little dent hammer and uh, maybe a drift punch inside there. But let's melt this uh, pitch or pitch. You know, it's serral bend. There we go.
see the hunk falling out. Oh, yeah. that, that completely melted out just beautifully and you can see the little hunks down in there. Let's just cool it off. Not real hot, but you don't want to touch it. So that's that's completely melted out of there. And then we just have this little distortion here. And what I'll do is start this with a uh, like a drift punch, and then I'll go in there with a the tapered rod and work that. Take and round this out a little bit better. starting to open up now we can go I think to a dent ball let me just try this first the, the brass is very soft because of being annealed there's that dent ball will fit down in there now and just get that started Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Let's uh, let's go see. Let's uh, clean this up a little bit. But this fire scale from annealing it tends to be pretty. Uh, it, it's pretty tenacious. So I'm going to go ahead and use a, uh, uh, a steel wire wheel. This is going to be an abraded finish anyway, so this is not a problem. There we go. You can see a little bit of, there's a little bit of a bump there and there. Um, so we're going to, we're going to clean those areas up, uh, do some dent work on that, and then scratch brush this and put it on the horn and see what it looks like. Get those to come down. Oh, that's looking nice. one we're gonna scratch brush this and see where 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 it's at and see what it looks like on the um, see what it looks like on the horn Okay, we've got this brace that's been bent and shaped. It's being installed now. I'm going to be um, soldering this and allow that tube to kind of self-align with the tuning slide. And then I can adjust the spread of the brace at that flange. And then this will be all brought up, burnished, flush, and then uh, soldered. And then this will be ready for final scratch brushing and lacquer so that's really cool that's going to be super cool all right more later and here we are with the uh 
the brace installed and awaiting final scratch brushing. You can see that the, the, the brace has been burnished down and soldered. There's a little solder uh, tinning around the flange that all got cleaned up and buffed and then final uh, scratch brushing occurred after that. And just another picture here of that. And finally, we have our beautiful Bach 42 trombone straight tenor, scratch brushed and lacquered. And here's a picture of the slide. This is an overhaul. This it means removing the dents, stripping the old lacquer, and um, the advantage is, of course, that you're removing less material because you're not buffing every pit and scratch out. Because with the abraded finish or the scratch brush finish, a lot of that is simply hidden in the brushing. So here is the Bach 36 with the F attachment. And um, it's got quite a few pits and scratches in the lacquer. So our hands and the salts and acids and oils pit the bell in areas. You can see some bell damage here. Not horrible but significant and that all needs to come out so that the the instrument is straight and true. There's a knuckle dent coming off the rotor that needed to be removed as well and again that's all part of a scratch brush refinish job and here it is in its final form uh, scratch brushed and relacquered a little bit closer shot and of the bell section that's really become a nice fun thing. Let's just take a look at the twins here. These are two different horns, two different customers. This first one here is a Bach 36 with an F attachment and you can see how nicely that that turned out with the scratch brush finish. You know you're not buffing or removing a whole lot of metal as in a traditional overhaul. Let's get the, the focus on the Bach 36 there. So the only one thing that you do have is if there are some deep scratches and pits in the metal, in the bell, you know, those, those, aren't, those aren't buffed out and removed. I mean, it can be, but, but if you remove it, then that bell gets thinned out. And usually the integrity of the bell in that little pit hidden in the, uh, the satin finish is really a great option and right next to it we have the Bach 42 but this brace the customer wanted a curved brace in there uh, similar to the um, the convertible setups that are available from Bach uh, unfortunately that S brace is not available or well it's available but not in stock and who knows how long that would be to get it in stock but it's not like they're made overseas so I don't know what's going on but anyway, uh, made the modification, had to hand bend that brace, and that looks really cool. It set the brace back about an inch. Um, probably will have impact on the resonance of that bell and the freedom. But it's really more of a cosmetic thing than an actual function because there's no way to remove this and put in an F attachment unless you were get able to get the flanges that have the... Um, set screws and this flange is no longer available from Bach with that so that's that, anyway uh, these both turned out really great both of them had significant pitting in the hand slides that I did remove because that's pretty heavy nickel nickel silver I should say so anyway those are the twin the twin trombones that will be going out very soon to their respective customers one in North Carolina, one in Arizona. So thanks a lot for watching.